a boom town in the Florida Sun Belt, where the Georgia Bulldogs, an underdog, have just mounted an impressive drive to put up the first points of the game. Lars Tate on the payoff end after a 50-yard pass play set it up with a first and goal. And I want to think again, Trump, about not taking that penalty. Yeah, you're right. An excellent point to make. Could have been second and goal from the nine, but they elected to make it third and goal from the four, and Tate took it in. Four plays, 55 yards, a minute and 12 seconds, and the four-yard run by Tate. Deep men back for Florida State are Carlton Scott and Roosevelt Snipes. Butler hits it, a high spinner. Short for him, it went to the goal line. Oh, that was close. Freshman Carlton Scott rips it up the middle, gets across the 20 to the 22 with 5.21 to play in the first half. Randy Jackson came down to make the play, and here comes Eric Thomas, who's had his problems moving the ball. You can see the offensive output. That uh, first the, one was the killer. Yeah, the Florida State Seminoles this season have been outstanding offensively. They got nothing so far. That's 81-yard drive and a fumble. You're right, Don. That takes a lot of wind out of your sails. They were down close, looking like they go in on their first possession, then a fumbled pitch. Georgia got it back, and Georgia leads the game now 7-0. Snipes from the tailback. He's playing way off the line of scrimmage. You get time to read the holes, but there weren't any. I'll tell you what, this Georgia defense, too, on alignment, they're about a yard off the football, Don, and they catch and read. You'll see their defensive linemen just fire a form at the offensive lineman of the Florida State Seminoles and then stand there and wait for the running back to get to them. They're good, strong people up front. Now watch how far off the ball they are as we look right down the yard marker there. Well, they make liars out of me. Now the guy's right up on the football. They generally, are this day generally are back. There's no question. Yeah. Here's the throw, and the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. A man was open. The tight end, Pat Carter, coming across. Thomas had him all the way, but Wycliffe Lovelace on our all-name team tipped the ball. You can see him dropping out, too. He's a defensive lineman. He makes contact. Now watch him drop 94. out. Now watch him drop out. Gets his hands up, which is what defensive... Uh, he didn't get his hands up. Hit him right in the helmet. Why not? Whitecliffe Lovelace blocks it with his helmet. So now Eric Thomas with nine throws for 34 yards and four completions. And the one interception. Third. Ready to pitch now. Good throw. Jesse Hester gets it, but they hold him short of the first down, it would appear. Let's see where they spot the ball. Jet Hester off the right flank coming across. Hester, one of the great pass receivers in college football. Average close to 20 yards a catch. That was his first catch in a ball game. Bowden says that Jesse Hester is potentially greater than even Fred Bilitnikoff of Raider fame because he's much faster. Hester caught 42 passes in the regular season for a 20-yard per catch average. Nine times he went in the end zone with caught balls. You're faster than Bolitnikov. And Freddie knows that, but could still play. And for a long time. Dropping. Thomas throws and a good defensive play. Alvin Ruff covering, and Pat Carter can't get to the ball as it's slapped down. Calvin Ruff can also sack the quarterback from the left end position, which is really like a stand-up outside linebacker. Correct. Five sacks he has this year. Big day on NBC Sports. The American Cup will be getting a preview also at halftime as we go to NFL 84 in New York. Swing pass. No good. Sanchez was the man who got a hand on it. It was interesting, but it was almost a flaming disaster yes. for the Seminoles. Hassan Jones to uh, Jesse Hester. Well covered by Jeff Sanchez. Let me see this play again. You see uh, Hester go in like he's going to block. Jones go back because that must be a lateral from the quarterback. Flack number eight was right in Jones's face. Sanchez on the other end for coverage. Watch Sanchez. He's the... He's the center fielder back there. He's not fooled. First team All-American, Jeff Sanchez from Yorba Linda, California, with an All-American play. So, a trick play, nothing. Sanchez almost had the ball for the Bulldogs. Third and 10 coming up for Florida State when we come back. By Eddie Marinero of Hill Street Blues, and right now we've got a live action, Eric Thomas on the rollout. 
Firing tip ball. Once again, Florida State has to punt it. Tony Flack was on the play. 6-3, Tony Flack, a cornerback. Doing an excellent job there of getting the ball up in the air. So far, the Florida State receivers have been very well covered. Lewis Berry back in to punt again. Ed Marinero could play football. I yes, he, he could. The NCAA at Cornell as a senior. New York Jets running back. A long punt by Lewis Berry. He went down, but there's no flag. Georgia trying to return. A lot of Garnett and Gold there. It's been a street fight on special teams. They come really striking. Jimmy Harrell was the first man down. 47-yard punt and a three-yard return and a marker down with 3.16 to play in the first half. That's going to be against Georgia. After the ball is punted, it'll be uh, assessed clipping. Yes, it'll go back major penalties. Uh, I don't think the Florida State Seminoles have been shut out in a half they've played this year. There's 3.16 left. They're about to have that done to them. Well, Galen Hall, the coach of Florida, who's at the game, and his team defeated both these teams in the regular season, said to stop Florida State, you have to stop the big play. And he said to stop Georgia, you can't let them have the big play. They've done that. Big plays have been Flipping. the difference. It was a 50-yarder. Receiving team, going to run back. First down. Don, we've seen Bobby Bowden in bowl games before the Orange Bowl. Now, this year, he doesn't have the headset on. Next year, apparently, he's going to put it back on, call his own plays. And this year, he's been an administrator on the sideline. Well, one year at the Orange Bowl, and one of the greatest Orange Bowls, Oklahoma, edged Florida State 18-17. Bob Mike, he was calling the plays with cars as a key. Yes. Sending a couple of Edsels at the end, he said. <laughs> Ron Jackson running the ball there in first down. Back to Orlando Stadium as we look on. From high above in the Goodyear blimp. Second down and two. Making his way is Lars Tate, who has scored the game's only touchdown. The freshman runner from Indianapolis having his best game as a Bulldog. Cleveland Gary also in the game. Jesse Solomon made the stop. Now, Don, if you could characterize the first half to this point, it has basically been that Georgia has established control of the line of scrimmage against Florida State. Florida State offensively has not done that at all. Georgia keeps banging it in there. Florida State's going to the trick plays, the back page of the playbook. Going to that back page early. James Jackson, you remember that 50-yarder. Here comes another one downfield. Cassius Osborne going for the ball, and it's tipped away. That's good coverage. Martin Mayhew and Brian McCrary sporting very good coverage. When the ball is up in the air that long, that's when the defensive back is in the most jeopardy because you've got to uh, get to the ball, not make contact with the receiver, and still knock the ball away. Now, watch the way these two guys, they keep track of the receiver, try to avoid contact as best they can. Great job. Just tipped away by Martin Mayhew or another big play for the Bulldogs. Georgia throwing the ball a lot today, Trump. They have 119 passing yards, normally a running team. Florida, with only, as you see, 42 passing yards. Georgia leads 7-0. Ron Jackson. Hey, those runners, when they look at that Garnett and Gold defense, you know you're going to pay a price running into it. They're right. team hitters. Ron, nicknamed Electron by his teammates. They've, uh, Georgia's done an excellent job at the line of scrimmage, Don. That's the big key in this first half. They've established control with running the football. Florida State has not. Coach Dooley feeling much better about things as the game wears on. His team leading 7-0. Third and four. Raw didn't get there. Andre Smith, the sophomore fullback, running straight ahead. With 2.16 and the clock running in the second quarter, Georgia will again punt the ball back to Florida State. A tremendous halftime show from Disney World here at the Florida Citrus Bowl. Also a preview of the AFC wild card game. We'll switch to New York for that 
The Raiders and the Seahawks are coming up next on NBC Sports today from the Kingdome in Seattle. Joe Wessel back in the punt return team for Florida State. Aaron Holliman's back deep. Here comes Holliman. He's down. Grass Field lost his footing, cutting back. An excellent playing field. 43-yard punt and just a two-yard return. 113 to go now in the first half. Trump and Florida's going to have to start firing. You're right. This may be the two-minute offense that Florida State likes to use, and it may help them get out of the, the lethargy that they've shown in the first half. Georgia, I would imagine, will play a much different defense now because there is just 113 left. It may shake Florida State awake. Thomas, quarterback. Set the eye with Eric Thomas at quarterback. Junior from Lake Park, Georgia. Pick up the blitz. Here comes the rush. Intercepted. Kevin Harris has it for Georgia. And Harris is finally knocked out of bounds by the quarterback who threw the intercept. Eric Thomas gets him inside the 15. Might have stepped out of bounds at about the 18. See where they spot it. Uh, Georgia's defense comes up with another big play. Two interceptions today. Excuse me, let's give a big assist to John Little, the rover back. Now, what he did was he went with Snipes. Now, watch this. This is set up as a screen all the way. When Thomas rolls out here, you'll see the Manning coverage right underneath Roosevelt Snipes. There's nobody. Oh, excuse me, I got 19. It's not 19. It's 39. Andy Lloyd. And Harris is there to make the interception. That's three big turnovers for Florida State in the first half. Now watch once again. You see 39. As soon as Snipes goes out, you can see him at the top of the screen. He covers it. Now Thomas has got no receiver, but he still throws it. Harris there to make the interception. That was quacking when it came down. Yes, it was. It shouldn't have been thrown. And, and I'm, duck pass. And, and Don, still, it appears to me that Florida State going with the trick plays, trying to do something fancy as opposed to something sound and fundamental. Kevin Harris, as we pointed out earlier, was a two-time starter. Past two years at wide receiver. Used to try to beat the cornerbacks. Now he is one. And he's got two interceptions today, so he's still catching the ball. He's got great hands. He's made two very difficult interceptions. And faster as problems arise. He'll be in a gallop here if this continues in the <laughs> second half. He looked like a renegade. Renegade's the horse that comes out when they score, but he hasn't been seen today. Jackson throws and overthrows. James Jackson, the freshman quarterback. Trying to get the ball downfield, Andre Smith. I think you're right. There was a receiver in the end zone, Hockaday, but I do believe he was throwing the ball to uh, Andre Pulpwood Smith. He was wide open there with nobody in coverage. Jackson, 4 of 10 for 102 yards, but 50 of them came on that throw to Fred Lane that set up the first and goal at the 4, and the subsequent touchdown only score of the game. He can run, too, Don. Yes, he can. James Jackson, the QB, second and 10. Likes to roll out when he throws. Go to the run, and right up the middle is Lyle's Tate. The freshman who scored the game's only touchdown. He's down to the one-yard line, and he's got a first down. That six-foot-five-inch, 310-pound offensive center, Keith Johnson, Stevens, Anderson, Strozier, Weaver doing an outstanding job up front. Look, there's nobody to even lay a glove on Lars Tate. They are blowing people out up front. Georgia is against Florida State, and once again, the theme of this first quarter is just controlling the line of scrimmage, something that Florida State has not done at all. 57 had the best shot. John Eford didn't come close. Lars Tate averaging 11 yards a carry. His best day as a Bulldog runner, six carries, 67 yards, one touchdown, and he got it down close enough where it's first and goal for the Bulldog, Florida. I'll tell you what, you never know what site you're going to see here. Last night... You're going to see hotels with yes. 28 million visitors. And I'm also going to dinner last night with my family about 8 o'clock. Look over to the right, and Cape Kennedy's over there, and I see a rocket going up. We stopped right in the middle of the street. There were some Floridians rather upset with this, but it was a sight to behold. The rocket went up last yeah, night. Yeah, there was... I, I don't know if it was uh, one of the... Uh, uh, one of the... Uh, did you see this late Space at night, rocket? What, what? Did you see this late at night? <laughs> yes, there was no UFO reported this morning, so we all watched right in the middle of the street. Carlton Scott is back deep for Florida State. Seminoles with a problem. 
Butler kicks off. Spinner goes downfield. Running back with the ball for Florida State. Dwayne Denson. And he gets it across the 25 as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television. Lars Tate in the end zone twice today for Georgia. Getting reshot. John Brantley, linebacker for Georgia on the tackle there. 104 left. Florida State's got to do something here to just get their minds right. I'll tell you one thing Eric Thomas is going to see is a big rush. Georgia's really been putting the pressure on. They go to the run. Tony Smith runs the ball. Broke a big one early on first down. But Florida State needs a lot more than that. Jake Richardson on the tackle. Eight years since the Seminoles have been shut out in a half. 35 points a game they're averaging. They lost that game to Miami 47 nothing. No. A long time ago, early in the career of Coach Bowden, in his nine years at Florida State, the Seminoles have won 71 percent of their games. Look at that defensive line out, Don. Watch him catch. See there? Now once the running back goes through, then they get to the quarterback. Jake Richardson. 99. And you can see that defensive front. There's a lot of people up there. Their first idea is simply to catch those offensive linemen. And then once the running back's clear, then they go after the quarterback. Now, that takes a lot of time. That means that Eric is not getting very good pass protection at all. Vince Dooley was saying yesterday that the problem has been with our defense playing good and playing good. They don't get any encouragement from the offense, but today they have. You're right. The offense has turned mistakes into touchdowns. This has got to be a day at the beach for the Georgia defense, because the offense today is here to play. So at halftime, a surprise leader at the Florida Citrus Bowl, the Bulldogs of Georgia, leading the Florida State Seminoles 14 to nothing. We'll be back in Orlando after this. They got to go back to their basic game plan, whatever it is, try to run the ball at Georgia, spread out the defense a little bit, and not be so impatient. Well, we'll find out together as they're both back out now and ready to go. Second half action coming up. You can see that Georgia has just about played a perfect half. No turnovers, time of possession clearly in their favor. Uh, decent rushing yards, but look at the passing yards. Those, that, those are the yards that surprise most people who are uh, dog fans. And it's got to please Vince Dooley. He's in, a control, he's in control of a football game against a very good opponent who has been big play crazy throughout this season, and he shut down those big plays. On the other side, Bobby Bowden's got to wonder, wait a minute, you know, the personality of this team is to run the ball at least 51 times a game. Bang it in there, bang it in there, and then come with the special plays. Well, they've come with the special plays first, and not really banged it in there very well. I'll tell you one thing, though, Coach Bowden and the Seminoles have been here before. They're going to make it a football You're game. Right. Two quarters to go. Eric Thomas, the quarterback for Florida State from Georgia, never quarterbacked in a losing game in Little League in high school. He quarterbacked the Florida State freshman to a 5-0 season. He's only, his record as a starter is 6-1-1 one one coming into this. I think the Auburn game's the only game he ever started. They lost, and they lost by a point. Well, the quarterback story is the Jackson kid, the freshman out of Georgia. When Todd Williams goes out with a hyperextended knee, Jackson has done a superlative job, job at quarterback in the first half. Jackson really has. The big play of this game had to be that 50-yard pass he threw to Fred Lane that set up Georgia with a first and goal at the Florida State 4, and then they subsequently scored the first touchdown of the game. I think uh, the postscript to this football game will be that turnover after the 81-yard drive that Florida State got no points. Kevin Butler is into the ball, and we're underway. Darren Holloman sprinting up the middle. Bulldogs there to get him. John Brantley was down, and now Eric Thomas leads the Florida State offense back out. Art Baker is the offensive coordinator. See, Florida State has been a second-half team. A lot of teams from the South are because they're so well-conditioned from playing and training in the humidity. It's a warm day here today in Orlando, just like they like it. Chamber of Commerce weather. Yeah, you see uh, Rosie Snipes starting the second half with Hester and Jones at the wide receivers. Pitch back to Snipes. The leading rusher turns up the sideline and gets across the 20-yard line, close to the 25. We'll see where they spot him out. 
Defensively, Georgia played a magnificent game. They've kept the pressure on Eric Thomas when he's had to throw. They've shut down the run. They've been good all year long, but especially good today. In this game that Georgia wants so badly after closing the regular season with three straight losses after that 7-1 and one start. Chumley, le defensive left tackle, 76 has played a big game. So have the linebackers, Knox and Mitchell, Knox Culpepper and Bill Mitchell. And Kevin Harris has been the star with two interceptions at the right corner. Second and five. Just a little bit up the middle. Cletus Jones, the fullback for the Seminoles, takes it to the 27th. Don, it looks like Florida State's intention here at the outset of the second half is to establish something at the line of scrimmage, not be so tricky, be a little more fundamental. They've got great speed, offensive weapons. They've got to be used sparingly, though. And you've got to control that line of scrimmage to give Eric Thomas time to pass and keep those defensive linebackers, linemen and linebackers out of uh, Thomas's face. Or no matter what you draw up, it ain't going to work. Another thing, Trump, about those trick plays, there are low percentage. You know, the yes. wide receiver option throw. And when you do it, you'll the percentages hold up. You lose it down, and you all of a sudden you're in a hole again. And I'll tell you another aspect. Psychologically, Georgia looks at Florida State and say, well, they're coming with trick plays. They, they think we're a great defense, and, and Georgia feeds off that. Florida State, on the other hand, says, wait a minute. We can't go with our bread and butter plays here. We're going with trick plays. The coach has no confidence in us. Third and less than a yard, and Eric Thomas calls number one his own and gets it straight ahead. He was bothered by a hip pointer, as I think you pointed out earlier, and wasn't running real well. He's just a good all-around athlete. He's big, strong, 6'1", 195 pounds. A junior from Lake Park, Georgia, heavily recruited by the Bulldogs, but he went to Florida State. Lake Park, right near Valdosta, which is now this is the number one high school team in America this year. First down through the run and snipes. Not big, but so quick and shifty. 5'9", 180, weaving behind his blockers. Gets by the front line of the Georgia defense and gets ahead for a game of four. It'll be second down and six. I'll tell you one thing, when Snipes gets a lot of yards, you got to give credit to those uh, fullbacks in front of him. Cletus Jones, Cedric Jones, they're good blocking fullbacks. They'll take on a linebacker and allow Snipes a chance to get right by him. fires and gets it in. Coming off the left flank is wide receiver Hassan Jones. A deep threat. 18 yard to catch average this year for 28 receptions. Seven for touchdowns. And just to show you how much, how frustrating it must be for the Florida State Seminoles, that's Jones's first catch. He was one of the big play guys throughout the 84 season. They're going to be throwing more to these great wideouts though. The strength of this team is really Hester and Hassan Jones, two top pro prospects. Junior. That was good for a first down. Up the middle, running hard as Cletus Jones, and the dogs don't give him much. And a first down carry, they key on the up back and get him at the line of scrimmage. Watch what happens here. You'll see the running back run right into his own man. You see the way those defensive linemen are catching still, just keeping him right at the line of scrimmage. It was Henry Harris able to stand up the offensive lineman, and basically Jones had no place to run. Five runs now, 22 yards. Thomas takes the drop, stands in, throws on the run, and he gets his tight end. Pete Panton comes down with the ball on a well-thrown ball. Good for 13 yards and a Florida State first down. So the Seminoles, as you remember, they did their first possession in the first quarter, move right down the field, but that first drive today, they fumbled down close. You can see the blitz coming. It's decently picked up by Florida State. A pump. Panton moves enough to get away from the linebacker. And then Bulls right over. Is that Sanchez, 31? Yes, Jeff Sanchez on the tackle. First down, Florida State. Big change in attitude here by Florida State. Wouldn't you agree? I think the offense is a little bit more diverse right now. They're throwing basic pass pedals. Now we go. And snipes it gone. One man with a shot. Flat. The flat get him. He did. He knocked him out of bounds at the eight. Tony Flack got him, but Snipes had an open track to the end zone, and now after a 37-yard run on the pitchback, Florida State will go first and goal. Snipes for a guy 5'9", runs, has the stride of a guy about 6'3". He's very deceiving at the corner. 
And on this drive, they start the second half very conservative, nothing fancy. And this is generally the way Florida State plays. Now seven carries, 57 yards by Snipes. He's had three straight 100-yard rushing days. That was the big one, the 37-yarder, right back to the money. And Snipes cuts in, cuts out, and a nice tackle. Ooh. Jeff Sanchez, the All-American safety, saved a touchdown for Georgia, but for the moment... Snipes may have turned his ankle a little bit there, too. You can see Sanchez rolling up the back of his leg. He's going to come out. Tony Smith is going to come in. Now watch the speed that he has coming out here. Watch Sanchez, 31, fights off the blocker, and then in desperation just dives at his legs. You can see he kind of gets his ankle twisted, and he's being helped off the field. And Roosevelt Snipes needed aid to get off the field, so... Whether or not he'll be back and how soon remains to be seen. Tony Smith goes in his tailback. This is the 10th play of the sustained drive by the Seminoles who trailed. Underdog Georgia 14-0 third quarter. Pitch back Smith. Flag down. Yep, marker is down at the line of scrimmage. This is where the Seminoles have been misfiring today, Trump. They've gotten to this point before and turned it over to Georgia. Illegal procedure that can only be against the offense. So he'll take it back. Here's Bobby Bowden talking on the sideline. So I believe Art Baker calling the plays. Defensive captain Knox Culpepper will make the call. I would think they take the penalty. We remember when early in the game, everyone was coached with hindsight. But Florida State turned down a penalty. Second and second goal from the nine. Offense, second down. Took it third and goal from the four, and Georgia took it in on the next play. Large State. Four-yard run, first touchdown of the afternoon. Now, there's no reason to be tricky here now again. Just stay with it, bang it in there. Florida State down to the 11-yard line now, second and goal. Georgia expecting the pass down there in the nickel package. Expecting the right thing. Yep. Tip ball is cut by a lineman, Jamie Duke. That's ruled in it. That's a completion. A reception. Well, yeah. That's a loss of down then. He's an illegal receiver. But Only if he's... It's a fumble ball. That's yeah. another thing. Yeah. The ball has to be tipped in order for him to catch it. I don't believe it was. Spends you, a penalty. Loss of down. Yeah. You, you can see Georgia once again coming with the blitz. And watch Thomas. Does he throw? He does. Well, that was kind of knocked out of his hand. Yeah, he wasn't trying to get it to Jamie Dukes. Duke showing very fine hands. The ball. Loss of down. Yep. Third down. Loss of down it is. That hurts. Illegal reception, so with 10.41 to play in the third quarter. The Seminoles, as they've done earlier, get down close. Mistakes force them back. Okay, Georgia staying with the nickel package now, taking the timeout. Make sure they get the right people on the field. That gives Florida State a chance to catch their breath. Eric Thomas wants a little counsel also as he'll come back to action with a third and goal from the 16 coming up right after this. 80 degrees and sunny in Orlando, Florida. Florida State trailing underdog Georgia. 14-0, 10-16 to play in the third quarter in the Florida Citrus Bowl on NBC Sports. Kester's off on the right flank. There's a throw. Hassan Jones goes for the ball, and it's broken up beautifully by the man who's intercepted twice previously. Kevin Harris, cornerback for the for the Georgia Dogs. He has played a whale of a game. Hassan Jones is a great leaper. This is well thrown by Eric Thomas. Jones had nowhere to go, no way to catch this. That's a good job. Well, a real good job. He's been doing one all day. Kevin Harris could be headed for MVP honors with two interceptions in the breakup of what would have been a scoring throw. Now freshman kicker Derek Schmidt, who is in the top ten of the nation among kickers with 93 points. No, it's the field yes. goal. Whoa, that, was, that was close, Tom. Sure was. And 32 yards out, the freshman from Sarasota gets favored Florida State its first points of the day. It's a 14-3 game, and we'll be back at the Citrus Bowl after this. Adverse development here, Trump, for the Florida State Seminoles. Rosie's trying to walk off a twisted ankle. You can see the new tape on that right ankle. They could certainly use his services. Young man with great speed. Missing Greg Allen, their All-American running back, Heisman Trophy candidate. 
Now they're three deep in that running back situation. Probably up to uh, Tony Smith the rest of the day. There you can see the new tape on the right ankle. Former Heisman Trophy candidate. Flutie won that thing by yes. a plurality bigger than Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> to the field goal, the kickoff. Knocked down field by Barco. Into and out of the end zone, so the dogs will go from their 20. Tomorrow, join us for a special show as NBC Sports rocks with Sports World's music videos. It's the sports year in review set to the songs of today's top groups. Sports World's music videos, it's all coming your way tomorrow. One o'clock Eastern time, America loves its sports, NBC style. This is a terrific show. Really creative television. Florida State's well played, 66 yards, 4 minutes and 34 seconds. 32-yard field goal by Schmidt, but a missed opportunity. George on first down, not much there. Off the bottom of the pile is Gerald Nichols, the right tackle who upended the ball carrier. Freshman Cleveland Gary. Seminoles will be digging in, trying to get it back here. Watch this offensive line of the Georgia Bulldogs. Wow. Stevens blew him out of there, didn't he? Ken Johnson still in there at center, number 61. He's with his bad back. Whoops, whoops. Another big play by the Seminole defense, Daryl Gray, an outside linebacker. All down to start today, a surprise starter. Behind the line of scrimmage on second and eight, so now the dogs have to go third and long. Don, that's the uh, same play we saw in the first half that resulted in about a 15-16 uh, yard gain. Good escort, Pete Anderson, along with Jackson, but Florida State there to stop him. Third and 12. Jackson gets out of trouble. Really gets out of it. James Jackson, bad ankle and all, outruns everybody for 25 yards and a Georgia first down. The player, Fred Jones, finally on the tackle. The thing about this is there is no player on the field who is responsible for the quarterback. The whole defense is responsible for the quarterback. But once he gets by that line of scrimmage, you've got linebackers and defensive backs in coverage. Great speed by the stair. He can make big things happen fast. The 50-yard pass and now the 25-yard run as they go back to it. Lars Tate takes the ball to the 45-yard line. A gain of two yards on the play will make it second down and eight. We set up the ball game as the Florida State defense giving up several big plays. There you see. Last three possessions. Yes, sir. Georgia, prior to that touchdown, had only scored two touchdowns in the previous 15 quarters, almost four games. They got two in the first half today. Well, Bob has made the comment that uh, his defense gets a lot of offense as well. Yeah, he said, don't worry. Oh, there's oh, a ball on the field. Florida State has it. up the Seminoles in their big following here in Orlando. We'll see it again. Paul McGowan, freshman on the recovery. This is a great hit. Let's see if we can see who makes it. Taylor. Henry Taylor jars that ball loose. 58. Whoa, 32. Excuse me, Martin Mayhew on the recovery. First turnover for the Bulldogs. Weak side linebacker plays away from the tight end. Henry Taylor with great pursuit to come across and go to the ball as he did there. First down. Open field, running with the ball for Florida State is Cletus Jones, the fullback. Sanchez and Mitchell knocked him down. Now this game is turned up in the third quarter. And can you see the difference? They're banging at the line of scrimmage. Trying to get some respect out of that Georgia defense. The hitting will continue immediately following as NBC Sports goes to the Kingdom in Seattle for the AFC wildcard game between the Raiders and the Seahawks. Right now, Florida State down 14 to 3. Second in the yard. First back through, but there's a penalty marker down as Cletus Jones ran for the first down and more. I think that's going to be defensive offsides. Really? Lined up in the neutral. There you go. There you you go. Got lined up offside. Yep. Huh? yep. Encroachment, as you say. Yeah, no contact is encroachment. That's correct. 
And can you see the personality change? A little more emotion on no the question. side of the field by Florida State. Now they're, uh, I think they're exerting some pressure on Georgia, just being physical at the line of scrimmage. That's the character of the Florida State football team. Outside, defense, first half. You know what I like here? College football, they don't call numbers. I like that. Spoken as an ex-player. You got it, brother. You heard number 84 a few times? I have, at the most embarrassing moments. First down and 10 for Florida State. 33-yard line, Eric Thomas. Nice pitch back, he gets it to Smith. Good defense by Georgia. They banged the quarterback, the pitch back, he got away somehow, and then Mitchell and Waters struck the running back, Tony Smith. One of the ways you can destroy the option, and this is the option, is penetration. You can see 59 Waters right there just taking the choice away from the quarterback. 56 Billy Mitchell on that hit, and Waters cleans up on the outside. Well done. Well defense by Georgia. Really well defensed. Excellent play by the Bulldogs. That makes it second down and 10, so Thomas will be a pitching. He's got to hurry. Gets it away, and oh, his tight end had a step on the back here, but the pressure forced an overthrow. That brings up third down and 10. Trying to go to Pat Carter, he hit earlier, remember, for a first down. Well, this has been a blitz down now for Georgia. Let's see if they come to it again. Uh, it also looks like, uh, let's count defensive backs here to see if Georgia goes with that nickel package that they run. One, two, three, four. No, they only got four. Standard defense. Eric Thomas has the ability to run option to his left. Here he goes. Whoa, no. Option to his left, but nobody was there. Smith falls on it, but again, the Seminoles misfire when they had a big opportunity. You called the play, Don. That's exactly what it was, and it looked like Tony Smith did not get the call. The rest of the offense played the option left. This is a blind pitch by the quarterback. And you say, wait a minute, bring that ball back here. Oh, he got a string on that. Are they lucky they got that back? Somebody will get yelled at on the sideline. Tony Smith is being talked to right now. Jimmy Harrell back as a single safety now for Georgia. Lewis Berry hits a high punt. And it come down inside the five. Again, a big special teams play by the Florida State Seminoles. A 42-yard punt, but most importantly, Pete Panton, the tight end covering, was able to down it at the one-yard line. Dogs get the ball, but they have a problem when they get it when we come back. And the American Conference West side. Right now, we've got a lot of college action to go as Georgia tries to get out of the hole, and they go to the run. Andre Smith takes it out to the three-yard line. Florida State using a five-man defensive front there, Don. They want to keep that ball down there. Keith Johnson, that huge offensive center of Georgia, getting up 6'5", 3'10". Some of the cumulus nimbus. Is that good or bad? I'm not even sure if that's what they are, but it doesn't <laughs> look too bad. No rain forecast. Sunny and 80 degrees. Trying to run as a penalty marker goes down. Look at these Seminoles play defense. With Jesse Salomon and Billy Allen come up on a penalty marker play. Cleveland Gary caught the ball up. Offsides defense. Oh, there have been some mental mistakes by Florida State today. Came on a second and eight play, so they'll get the down over to be second down and three. He had them where they wanted them. Would have been third down and about eight, as you said, down. And gee whiz. Defense, offsides, second down. So the ball set to the eight-yard line in Georgia, now with second down and just over two. Bobby Bowden talking to Kirk Coker and Eric Thomas. Got to believe they're going to go Trump to Hester and Hassan yeah, Jones. Looks like he's drawing in the dirt over there. You can't go to him until they get the ball. There's a big play. Georgia's defense. Our offense unable to move the ball as Brian Williams shot the gap. Got through to get the quarterback James Jackson of Georgia. Watch the line of scrimmage here. That's Keith Johnson, that huge offensive center. 
Stood up pretty good by the defense. You can't really see the number of the man that gets in there first. Brian Williams, it appears. 47. Big down now. Loss of three on the play. Georgia having a problem, as you see, with third down conversions. Third and five. And watch that quarter. Jackson, he didn't get a thing. The Knowles rise up. Get their man. Been an awful lot of pressure on this Florida State defense today, Don. More than they're used to. They're used to being ahead. 35 points a game today. They have but three as we're starting to wind into the late portion of the third quarter. Chip Andrews into punt again. Punters have been very important people for both sides today. Andrews, a senior boomer in Sparta, Georgia. 45.4 yards of punt. This is senior year. Ranked him among the nation's leaders. Line drive downfield. Darren Holloman will bring it back. Gets it inside the Georgia 40 down to the 38-yard line. A seven-yard return on a 39-yard punt. So Florida State again gets good field position thanks to the defense. Now can the offense capitalize? We'll find out. Florida Citrus Bowl. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy. This was not how they projected this game to go. Trump, they're looking for Florida State to get a lot of points. Georgia's defense has been strong. Been a big surprise, but uh, at least so far in the second half, the Seminoles are playing in character. This is a little more in their personality. Control that line of scrimmage. Down 14 to 3. Thomas firing. Jeff Hester makes a diving reception at the 30-yard line. They got the blue chippers on the flanks. They have to get the ball to them. Well, they're also getting soft coverage now out of the uh, out of the Bulldogs secondary because they, Florida State's been able to run the ball a little bit. I think that was their intention at the outset of this ball game. They couldn't accomplish it, and that's an audible. You'll see the quarterback go to his face mask, and then it's a quick out. Second down and two. First back through was Cletus Jones, the 220-pound fullback, normally a blast blocker, but he averaged over five yards a carry this year. Chief Osceola, he's ready to fire that spear. Maybe right into the hook of the dog. Yeah, they may need it before this ball game is over. It'd be a penalty, but it'd get somebody's attention. Riding the good horse, Renegade. Yes, sir. There's the dog. Like his collar, he's very fashionable today. Dogs that bite, they say, are on the defense. And they're teeing off now, ready to come after Florida State as the Seminoles starting to challenge inside the 30. Thomas, this time he makes sure he's got Smith back there. And it turns into a good gainer. Gary's down to the 20. It'll bring up short yardage for the first down. First time we've seen that formation. Two tight ends. A wide receiver to this side of the field. They run the option. Guard pulls. Option teams call that a load. They option off Loy, number 39. Pitch it to Smith. And you need some blocking on the outside. Hester got one. And it's a first down. Eric Thomas, a very versatile athlete. He'll option right or left and throw the ball. This time he goes to the first back through. The fullback, Cedric Jones, runs the ball. Donald Chumley knocks him down for Georgia. Culpepper, we haven't called his name much in his second half. You see a good double team by Dukes and Ionata. He's there to make the tackle. Sometimes when Georgia plays, people up when Georgia play, people up in Georgia say there's more than 148 out there. He seems to make all the tackles. His dad, the late Knox Culpepper, was a captain of Georgia. Knox Culpepper on the field now had team record 26 tackles against Georgia Tech this year. Ooh, that's busy. Pitch back to Tony Smith. First down carry is good for maybe two yards before Chumley, who's playing a big game at defensive tackle for the Dogs, knocks him down. Chumley tripped him up. Well, let's see if Florida State, at this point on the field now, can function without making a just a dumb mental mistake. An offsides, an illegal formation or illegal procedure has just killed him today. I'll tell you, Bobby Bowden had an age when he saw that pitch back and no trailer on the plate to Whoa. get it. Whoa. That stopped the drive. Now it's second down and ten. No gain the last time. Going for low. Hassan Jones. No. Oh, man. Close. Good looking play, but one foot wasn't in. 
Kevin Harris once again in coverage. He's the guy who's come up with two interceptions. They've tested him all day long. Watch his feet. One in. No way. Good call by the official. That right foot came down on the white. That is out of bounds. That's clearly a good call by the official. Thomas now 8 of 19 on the passing day. 71 yards and the two interceptions. 11 seconds left in the third quarter. Florida State has not scored a touchdown. Florida State dominating the third quarter from a possession standpoint. But has scored only three points. At halftime, Georgia, the underdog, led 14 to nothing. First time Florida State and Georgia have played since 1965. This is the ninth meeting overall. Georgia won the first five. Florida State the last four. Well, some of these people weren't even around the last time they played. Yeah, you know, the best play they've had so far today has been a reverse. Uh, the receivers are too wide to run a reverse. That's not going to happen here. Hits back. Good play. Looking to the end zone, puts his head down and gets a first down very nearly a touchdown. Tony Smith, a 5'9", 175-pound junior tailback from Miami. Made a mistake earlier, but now comes up with the big run, finally knocked down by Harris. 15 yards on the carry, and one of the reasons it works, knocks Culpepper not there to make the tackle. Good play by Ionata, and that's that hesitation in the backfield by the quarterback and the running back. That gives the offensive lineman position on those linebackers to make a block like that. What's up front that counts in big John Ionata from Dunedin, Florida. Junior tackle, shot down Culpepper, and now it's first and goal for the Seminoles. And we got a meeting of the officials on the sideline here. I wonder if they're possibly talking about... Oh, there was 11 seconds left in the third quarter, and suddenly there's 21, 20. Now they're getting it down to the uh, right time. Up to this point, Florida State the second half played very well, but they've gotten down in this area and then made the dumb mistake. If the uh, Seminoles don't get it in here, they might fold the tent. It hurts when you get down. You're right. This will be their third time if they don't get it in the end zone within inside the 10-yard right. line. It is. Third time. That can beat you up mentally. And each time with a first down. Excellent point. There's Vince Dooley. Well, they wind the clock out. Yeah. The Bulldogs head up field, putting four fingers in the air. Fourth quarter's our quarter, they say. That's so, so the Seminoles will be right back after these messages from your local station. The live action now. Florida State going inside the two-yard line, the fullback. Latus Jones tries the middle of the Georgia defense, didn't get there. But the Seminoles with three more downs. There is a critical loss. Roosevelt Snipes starting tailback for the Seminoles out with an ankle injury. Got a big ice bag on it, shoulder pads off. That's obviously a bad sign, start the fourth quarter. You can tell how badly he wants to be there. Right down near the payoff. Game evening up statistic-wise, but Georgia still with the dominance on the scoreboard, leading 14-3. to You like the option here? Looks like it. There's the lead blocker. But it goes the other way, and Smith is into the end zone. Touchdown, Seminoles, and it's tightened up. Tony Smith. Excellent job by the Florida State offensive line. Allowing Smith to cut back. When you run a play like this, you need somebody to cut off that pursuit from the inside. You can see Mitchell trying to get through there, and Waiters, Waters trying to get through there. He cuts back, and there's basically no one to make the tackle. Now watch Mitchell try to get through the tackle. Hey, he's got to go in the end zone to get to the ball carrier, and that's a great job. And Florida State goes for two. That's a strong 175 pounds, too. Tony Smith taking on the tacklers, going for two indeed. Option oh. and Eric Thomas is going to get nowhere near the goal line, so it's a 14-9 game. If they kick the extra point, they'd still need a touchdown. But they made the two-point conversion. They'd have been down by six and conceivably could have won it with a touchdown and an extra point. This is the straight option, the dive. He chooses to stay with it. Jeff Sanchez, All-American, the strong safety, makes the tackle. Five-point 